Hello all. So in communication technology for smart grid, that is part two. Let's uh, start with it. The content which we have already discussed in part one was communication architecture and the wide area measurement system that needs to run. Now in this particular video, we will be discussing home area network that is HAN, neighborhood area network NAN, and wide area network that is WN. And again, these three are the communication technology which we are going to use in the smart grid. Let's start with the first one that is HAN. So as the name suggests, a home area network. So uh, the home, it uh, simply suggests that the network which is a very small area it is covering. So it might be a very few meters, let's say 10 meters to 40, 50 meters, that's it. So and you can see here there is a depiction over here where there is a system, uh, the router, the printer, the TV, the television, and the video games are being connected together and it has all been connected to uh, the internet. So ethernet cables are there, wireless uh, connection is there, electrical wiring is there. So overall everything together will be connecting and it is known as a home area network. A home area network is nothing but it is a connecting of devices. So uh, it is nothing but connection of devices as I said earlier. The smart appliances will be connected all together with uh, smart metering system. Now this uh, HAN will also consist of the software application which will be able to monitor and control this network. Now it's uh, area where most of the digital application solutions and energy management has been taken care of. And moreover, HAN is since applicable to the load side, that is the customer side. Hence, demand side management is uh, very much possible with the help of HAN. Now the application which uh, can be enabled, it is uh, obviously by the use of the bandwidth and the two-way end-to-end communication. So this way, uh, it enables all the electronic devices and the home appliances which becomes internet ready. That is, if it is on the internet, so it is easily accessible throughout the home network or even if you go outside the home network, if it is available on the internet. So the major components which HAN, that is home area network consists of are first smart home appliances, second is communication network and the third is the smart meter. Smart home appliances consist of uh, many appliances for example let's say uh, Amazon Eco Dot or let's say a uh, smart uh, washing machine or a smart uh, refrigerator. And communication network uh, is obviously it can be a Bluetooth communication or the Wi-Fi or the GB communication. And smart meter is the place where uh, the meter is smart which uh, communicates with all other appliances inside the home. Now moving ahead, uh, the technology standards, the HA and the technology standards which they are using. So basically there are three well-known alliances related to the utility that uh, work to, towards the technology standardization that is the home plug power line ally, the z tape and the Vidya line. So these are the basic technology standards which are being used in HAN. Now let's uh, move towards the benefits of HAN. What are the benefits the HAN has? So first and foremost thing taking into consideration the consumers, the consumers should be the maximum benefiters. So uh, with the help of HAN, it empowers the consumers, that is, it benefits the homeowners directly. It is thus uh, the consumers can manage the peak uh, demand, that is, uh, they are able to utilize the power properly. Secondly, HAN allows the smart grid applications to communicate intelligently. That is, they are able to even decide and they are able to take decisions. That's why they are known as intelligent. Intelligent means that there is an ability to make decisions. The appliances will be on or off. So this is how, if the switching of devices is possible, it will be uh, greatly helping in energy saving. So other benefits are, the utility can also be beneficial apart from the customers that is they will be able to get the data uh, 
not on the home network and which could be easily useful for managing the great load. So the automatic at controlling the high energy consumption system. So this will result in a very stress-free electric grid. So thus it will avoid the blackouts as well. The utility will have an advantage of managing the growth grid load properly and it will avoid the potential blackouts on the free and stress-free electric grid. And the benefits are also, this will also provide energy monitoring, controlling and the energy consumption information. All the appliances, whatever energy is being consumed by them, the devices which they are using the energy that will be available to the consumers as well as to the utility so that the energy usage optimization is very much possible through this home area network. <coughs> now what are the challenges? Obviously a major challenge is to integrate together the technology solutions which are available. So the second challenge is the inter interoperability. That is, it's a very key concern. The technological solutions are there, but uh, will, will they be able to interoperate among themselves? It's a big question. And the third and the foremost thing that is the security issues. The privacy and security of the consumer is always at a risk. So that the key issue has to be addressed properly. So these were the all the basics of HAN, that is home area network. Next, we move on to the next topic that is neighborhood area network. So as you can uh, understand, we have already seen in the map that neighborhood area network is basically the network which we are considering at the distribution side. So we can say that it is the last mile, it is the last mile for the utility that is from generation to the consumer it is the last point where it is getting connected to the customer. So this is a point where most of the data is being collected from the users and this data is being transferred to the utility. So that's an uh, utility's head end system by a data collector or a concentrator. Now in order to make it effective, in order to have the communication proper and have the data proper, the technology which uh, NA is using is a RF mesh, that is radio frequency mesh, which is globally adopted for this NAND communication technology. Now what does it do is it gathers a huge volume of data because as I said, it's uh, located near the distribution end. So it will have n number of uh, users uh, associated with it. So since it is associated with n number of users, it will have a huge volume of various types of data. Which will obviously be important for the control signals from and to the millions of devices installed at the customer's office. Now the most critical segment that connects utilities and the customers in order to enable the primarily important uh, smart grid application. So this is the place uh, where there is a connectivity between the grid and the utility, uh, the utility and the consumer. So it's a very critical segment where the information could be lost or there could be malfunctioning in the power system. <coughs> you can see here. Yeah? It's a depiction of a NAN where a head end system is being represented here and that is being connected through internet through a RF collector. As I told you, RF comes into play. The RF will be giving the signals and the signals will be connected towards the home area network that is n number of users. So it's a very simple example which is being depicted here where the data collected will be of huge amount because the number of users will be very large. Now similarly, as I told you, it's the bridge or it's the point where utility and the consumers are connected. So you can see here, that this is the utility side and this is the customer side where the man plays an important role. This is a network where all are together connected. And the smart metering operations and SCADA system is between them. Now next, uh, we are moving towards the third and the last topic of the second part, that is wide area network. Now, what is wide area network? Obviously, wide area network, uh, if, if you move ahead, that is from the consumer to the distribution side, moving ahead to the transmission side. So, transmission side, if we take into account, then it will be a greater area than the HAN or the NAN. So, it will cover a broad area as a big area and any telecommunication network that covers a metropolitan or a region or a national or international boundary 
that will be known as a wide area network so it is connected over long distances it's very uh, very much uh, uh, useful for communicating for long distances let's say we have an example let's say there are two there is a school which has two campuses located in two different towns so obviously both the schools will have individual and hand individual hand they will have a home area network they will have individual hands and both the hans to connect it together will make a wan that is a wide area network so this is a uh, very good example to understand what is a wan as you can see here let's uh, uh, understand this there is there is a town there is a town which is situated here and there are three other towns situated at the other places and four are connected together so this is how it will be known as a wan which means a local connectivity a local connection that is a home area network is connected together here you can see there are 1 2 3 and 4 four home area network connected together which will make a wide area network so there are different topologies through which uh, wan can be connected and which very much resembles to the lan lan is also connected in the same manner so the difference uh, the the details is differ because of uh, lan is what the distance they cover the number of users is huge and there is a heavy traffic so this is basically three categories or the three uh, features which make it different from the lan topology now wan topology connects sites via dedicated and usually high speed link It requires special equipment, and links are not capable of carrying non-toppable protocols. Now, the topology which we are going to see is first one is bus topology, the second one is ring topology. So, in a bus topology, uh, the most important part is the there is a dedicated circuit which makes the possible the transient data regular and reliable. That's the most important part of the bus topology. Coming on the link topology, link topology differs from the bus by how it can have a different path. That is, in a link topology, you can have two different parallel paths for the data. So, if in case a uh, path fails, then the second path is readily available to transmit the data. You can see the example here. There is a South Oak Street Medicine. It's connected to the second building and third and the fourth. You can see here there is a bus uh, topology. If this would have been a ring topology, then again this B S uh, the South Oak would have been connected to the first to Columbus, which is given in the next example. Let's see here. Now see the ring topology. Now T1, 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 and B S L all four are connected together in a ring fashion. So this is a ring topology. Similarly, we have other topologies as well for band. For example, the star topology, a mesh, and a tiered topology. Let's see these three topologies to the Example, see here. Now this is a star topology. You can see here there is a one main building which is connected to the rest of the three. So it becomes a star topology. Similarly, you have a full mesh and a partial mesh topology where all are interconnected together. And here there is a little connectivity between the buildings, whereas some connectivity is missing. So this is a mesh topology. So this is all about the hand, hand, and hand which we have discussed in this particular uh, section. Let's see. Uh, we will discuss in the later part the rest of the communication technologies in this module. Thank you very much.